Okay, welcome you first, Professor Arrow. We are very pleased to have you here. And um, our very first question for you is how did you like your few days here in Germany? How did you experience the whole ceremony of Witten Lectures and the University of Witten Heidegger? Well, first of all, I was very pleased with the friendliness and the warmth of the greeting that I had with the, the attention of the listeners. When you lecture, the most important reward is that the people there are paying attention to what you're saying, and you can see from their attitudes and from the uh, questions that came afterwards how much uh, they uh, enjoyed, and I hope they enjoyed, but in any case, how nice they were <laughs> to the speaker. Um, second place, of course, the area is very interesting, uh, the, the very busy area, as I can see. A, uh, rather an interesting uh, topography, in spite of being a busy commercial region, there was hills and nature and a, a very nice river here to uh, enjoy it. And the uh, buildings uh, of the uh, university are quite impressive, and from what I've heard of the way it operates, uh, it seems to be quite different from any of the other universities here, and showing a very educationally motivated and uh, 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 organization with very high aspirations. So it was a very pleasant experience all around. Okay, so um, referring to your two talks uh, in the Witten lectures, so could you please uh, rephrase very shortly for us the, the main message you wanted to, to bring to us? The main message is that in the dialogue over social policy, there are many voices, and we, we would like, ideally, always to reduce everything to one so we can have a basis for argument that's uniform for all people. But in fact, we have not succeeded in doing that, and I think there are good basic reasons why that's not true, because we've learned so much from history, and there's so much at conscious levels, there's so much at unconscious levels, is that uh, we, if, if you give what is usually called an economic argument, which is an attempt to reduce it uh, to one dimensional continuum, um, we find that somehow the results are, uh, we don't like the results. Uh, let's just sometimes say, well, perhaps that means the results aren't good in spite of the fact we've done all this economic analysis. I don't uh, anywhere want to denigrate. I hope that I don't leave the impression that it's all a question of intuition and feeling. It, the economic analysis is extremely important. It will sometimes cause us to rethink our intuitions. A, this is a dialogue. It's not a, there's no one leading voice. It's more like a duet or a quartet um, of, uh, of, of uh, levels of voices, in, say, in musical voices, if I use that analogy. Uh, but it, that's, uh, fr uh, frequently we find situations in which the usual economic reasoning seems to lead to results we simply can't accept. And sometimes we simply have to listen to that voice. Sometimes we say, oh no, you're thinking very hard about it, the economics is telling us something, and we have to curb our intuitions. Sometimes, on the other hand, we have to say, the economics is wrong, the intuitions are right. And when I say economics, I'm really, I, I, I'm, that's because I'm coming from an economist's point of view, but it's really any kind of systematic, one-dimensional thinking, even if it's based on other considerations. So I think that's essentially, now there I was trying to show that our practice, it frequently does, uh, very often conforms to what I've said, and not, not to the economic, the idea that the, uh, the world is really ruled by economic analysis is wrong. Economists, of course, don't never feel that. They always feel their advice is disregarded. No one pays attention. There's other people who think that economists run things. Economists think they have no power at all. And uh, that, may be, that may be just as well that nobody has power, exclusive power. must remember the concept of rationality, as I'm using the term, is really a very weak one. 
I mean, rationality has many connotations. This is, this is a rather weak statement. It, just, it really just is a statement that decisions made under different circumstances have a certain kind of coherence about them. Um, you know, uh, the, uh, well, I'll, I'll just use ordinary symbols uh, uh, verbally. Uh, if on one occasion society has to choose between A and B, it chooses, it somehow winds up choosing A. And let's say conditions change, and now the society chooses between, instead of A has become impossible, but C emerges as a possibility, and society chooses B. Well, then it's reasonable to say that if A and C are the alternatives, A should be chosen. That's all is meant by rationality. Another way of putting it is this. Supposing, as is in fact done in many legislatures, you have your, somebody puts forth a proposition. Somebody then puts forth a second proposition. I don't mean a proposition, I mean a proposal. Let me, a proposed course of action. Somebody puts, then has the chance to make what is called an amendment, let's say a, a second proposal. And then the, the body votes on which proposal to go on. Okay, they accept one of them. Then, then somebody can come along with a third proposal and so forth. Well, do, should the final result depend on the order in which these proposals come up? That's another way of saying the same thing. And now it seems reasonable, it seems, it seems like a very weak concept of rationality to say that the order in which the proposals come up should make no difference. Yet in fact, uh, and that's, that's all that is really meant by rationality in, uh, in my context. So the word rationality has got to be interpreted very carefully. It's, it's, it's a very weak concept. Now maybe the answer is that's still too strong. It may even be too strong for individuals. As well as I say, they can't remember. They don't. You know, they're uh, 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 psychologists who've gotten interest in this, like the late uh, Amos Tversky or Daniel Kahneman uh, or, or others. Uh, will frequently find that even the way you formulate the question, even if you take two logically equivalent ways of asking a question, let's say A or B, but you add, that's how you ask the question may affect the outcome. And it's very well known to people who take polls, but from a practical point of view, if you're taking a poll, exactly how you formulate the question, even though logically it doesn't make any difference. Um, so it's possible that uh, uh, there are many considerations. One, uh, there are many reasons why this can these, this can fail. Uh, for example. Uh, you are drawing, on, you make the decision, you may be drawing on some information, but the information is unconscious. You, you have experiences in the past and you develop reactions. Well, different outside circumstances may trigger different memories. This is not, you're not aware of this. This is not something where you're sitting down. And you, may think you're, you may think you're thinking, but behind your thinking is a le level of the unconscious. This is the point which many uh, writers have made of through the ages, in fact. Uh, that the so-called a very large amount of tacit knowledge, but then once you grant that, what's actually drawn on? Uh, there may be a great deal of it. You're not drawing on all of it. At any given occasion, you're drawing on different, and therefore you may be making uh, what will turn out to be inconsistent decisions. So maybe too much even to ask for this kind of consistency. But it is a desire. I think one would agree that whether you can achieve it or not, it's a desirable trait. Yes, I'm not, I've, I've read very little, to be candid. I know there's great, been a great deal of discussion of deliberative democracy. Um, my view is that uh, deliberation means, in effect, you're bringing more of the knowledge to bear. Somebody says something, somebody else brings another point, and the first one says, oh, yes, yes, that does, now that I think of it, or now it brings back knowledge that I hadn't really been aware of before. That's one way of putting it, whatever it is. Or, or this is a piece of information that I never had and now I have it. The question is whether this actually leads to consensus or not. 